The first concept we are going to explore is speed. Speed is a difficult parameter to calculate without building scale models or using experimental data and computer simulations. So while speed calculations are not required to be turned in by the team, there are a few rules of thumb that can help maximize speed. First, keep in mind the length to beam ratio. This is simply the length, and the length that we're using here is the length at waterline, and we divide this by the beam. A higher length to beam ratio generally equates to a greater speed. Of course, this is merely a generalization and does not always hold true, which we will explore later. There are many variables that could affect speed, however, considering that every team uses the same propulsion motor, a high length to beam ratio could prove to be beneficial. Here are a few real world examples. We have a US Navy cruiser whose length is 567 feet and its beam is only 55 feet. This gives a very uh, large length to beam ratio of 10.3. Our next example is a speedy liner. Its length is 1,132 feet, and its beam is 135 feet. This gives a very respectable length to beam ratio of 8.4. Our last example is an oil tanker, which we would expect uh, from an oil tanker uh, cruising at a slow speed. It's going to have a low length to beam ratio. Now, out of the examples, it has the largest length at 1,246 feet, but it also has a very large beam at 223 feet, and so its length to beam ratio is low at 5.6. Now the caveat to length to beam ratio can be illustrated by the next pictures. For example, the two ships on the left have a length to beam ratio that is very similar to the length to beam ratio of the ship on the right. However, from these dry dock pictures, we can show that the length, especially here at the bow, is much less streamlined than the ship on the right. And this brings us to our next example, which is the block coefficient. And the block coefficient is exactly what it sounds like. It shows how blocky a vessel is, and the block coefficient formula is the volumetric displacement divided by the length at waterline times the draft times the beam. And we can show this in the picture. We're going to draw a block, which is the same draft, the same beam, and the same length at waterline as the ship. And when we put the ship in the, in the block, and of course we're only talking about the part of the ship that's in the water, we can see that the more that the ship takes up the block, the blocker the vessel is. And therefore, the greater the block coefficient, generally, the less the speed. And so when we go back to these examples, we can show that the block coefficient of the ships on the left are greater than the block coefficient of the ship on the right. And again, we can show this by an oil tanker. An oil tanker you would expect to be pretty blocky underneath the water. And you can imagine trying to push a block through the water, it's going to create a big bow wave. Likewise, the next rule of thumb is to minimize the wetted surface. The wetted surface is the surface area of the hull that is immersed in the water. Since water is a relatively dense fluid, there is considerable friction between the water and the hull. Therefore, the less the wetted surface, the greater the speed. And we're going to illustrate this by the following example. We're going to draw a water line here, and we're going to have one boat that has a semicircle hull, and above the water it's just going to be a rectangle. And we're going to say that the radius is one unit, and we're going to find the area of the semicircle. And so we only need to find the area that's underneath the water, so it's pi r squared divided by two. And the reason we're finding the area is because we need to find out how much water the ship displaces. And so the area is 
pi over 2. Now we need to find the perimeter of the ship that's in the water. So of course we're only again looking for the perimeter of the semicircle. So 2 pi r over 2. And our perimeter is pi. Now we're going to have another uh, ship, which is a rectangle underneath the water. And again, we're just going to make a rectangle above the water. And we need to have the area to be the same as the circle. That way they're displacing the same amount of water. So we're going to set the area as pi over 2. And then we can find out that the dimensions of this rectangle can be 0.886 draft and 1.77 units for the beam. When we find the perimeter of this rectangle, we find that the perimeter is 3.55 units. So since the perimeter is basically like the wetted surface, we find that the wetted surface of the circle is less than the wetted surface of the rectangle. And therefore, we'd expect the speed of the semicircular hull to be greater than the speed of the rectangular hull. The only other thing that comes from this example which we can explore later, is that the draft of the circle is greater than the draft of the rectangle. And of course, this could have limitations depending on where you're operating. Finally, we need to minimize the abrupt changes to the shape of the hull that is immersed. So if we're looking down on our ship, and we just have our center line right here, and we have our hull, and we're going to say our hull looks like this, all these places where the hull plates meet at sharp angles, we call these knuckles. And if we want to increase our speed, we either need to reduce the number of knuckles we have, or we need to reduce the angle between the knuckles. And of course, this rule of thumb can be more challenging than the others due to the curvature rules of our competition. Realize that fairing these abrupt changes is in the longitudinal direction. We also can uh, fair the abrupt changes to the cross-sectional hull. So if we're looking from the front of our ship and we have a hull that may look like this, these abrupt changes here are instead called chines. And these chines have more of an effect on stability and direction than they do on speed. Uh, reducing the number of knuckles, the block coefficient, the wetted surface, and the length to beam ratio are the four points of the speed video, and that concludes this video.